Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to Hill Auditorium. Tonight, you are joining us for our inaugural event, Service Above Self, honoring our veterans. We are very fortunate tonight to welcome distinguished guests of honor to share our, their thoughts with you on this Veterans Day 2015. It's my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Debbie Dingle, representing Michigan's 12th Congressional District. Our next special guest is Lieutenant Governor of the State of Michigan, Brian Kelly. It's our honor tonight to be together in a very nonpartisan way to salute our veterans. Thank you so much for your service. We live in the greatest nation that the world has ever known, and we owe it to you. Thank you. I went to service in May 1st, 1950. I had four to five weeks of basic training, no combat training. I then was signed to the Buffalo Soldiers, the last of the Buffalo Soldiers in Japan. We loaded on the Japanese fishing boats down in the hall and went to Korea. And our objective was to drive north to Seoul cut the enemy off, and then pocket them and wipe them out. After two days of driving north, the lid came off. We fought approximately five days with the Chinese and ran out of ammunition, ran out of food. By this time, there was only 139 of us still alive. My unit and every other unit was totally surrounded. So we surrendered. Out of that 139 that was captured, only 39 of us survived it. Because the one thing I've learned, freedom is not free. It was just another day in Iraq when he was shot and killed. No dramatic battle was fought, no objectives were met. He was killed and the war went on. We had just set up a patrol base in an Iraqi home. As I walked up to the roof, a single shot rang out. I thought nothing of it at the time. We had all been sniped at in this area before. The call for the corpsman went out. Uh, they were already with him by the time I got up there. Uh, we all knew that he had been shot in the head. The wall around the roof was too high to have gotten hit anywhere else. And our corpsman performed a miracle, keeping him alive. About 20 minutes after we finally got him to the surgical unit at TQ, the doctors came out and told us that he had passed away. They said that even if he had been shot on the operating table, he would have died. We wept. I hugged the corpsman as he repeated, as he repeated, I couldn't save him. I couldn't save him. Excuse me. I told the corpsman truthfully that if he couldn't, then no one could. He was 21. It was just another day in Iraq.
November 11th was set aside by President Woodrow Wilson in 1919 after the close of World War I and the Congress of the United States of America to be Armistice Day, to recognize those who served, but especially those who have died in combat since the Revolutionary War and extending at that time all the way up through World War I. In the intervening years, we have changed that to Veterans Day to honor all veterans. Every time that we stand, look at that flag, sing the national anthem, or pledge allegiance to that flag, take a moment to think about the 1 million 600 plus thousand men and women who have given their lives in the defense of freedom and to stamp evil out wherever it may rear its ugly head. <laughs>